Welcome to Nintendo Minute. We are on the road, as you can see, getting a chance to talk to some developers for, of games for Nintendo eShop. Uh, we're here joined by Brian from VBlank, which That's is the right. developer of Retro City Rampage DX. Thank you, yes. Brian, for joining us. Oh, happy to be here. So uh, we just had a chance to play the game, but for people who you know might not be as familiar with it, you know, what is you know the thirty-second elevator pitch for Retro City Rampage? Text? Right. So imagine an open world where you can go around and steal cars, but you can also collect power-ups and coins and jump on people. Um, so it takes the tropes from the old '80s and '90s video games, the 8-bit era. And it takes the modern stuff that we're used to, stealing cars, rampaging in open world, and it puts them together. Yeah, I was, uh, when I was playing it a bit earlier, I was, I didn't know what to expect going into this game. You know, Retro City Rampage means something, but like you were saying, a lot of classic games were definitely scattered throughout in a really cool way. So yeah, it seems like, you know, as we see here on the poster, there's a lot of nods yeah. to classic uh, game series, which I think people will appreciate. Yeah, and right. I really like the sort of the top-down mm -hmm. view that you have for the game as well. I think that looks really cool. Yeah, I, I feel like it's kind of like a toy box. You're yeah. kind of looking down. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. So in the title, Retro City Rampage DX, right. the DX is new. And what, right. what does that mean? The DX is uh, exclusive on Nintendo 3DS right now, and it adds a whole bunch of stuff to the game as well as rebalances and retunes it. And so since the original release on the Wii about a year ago, uh, the game's received a lot of updates and tuning and things. I've just been the director's cut, being a perfectionist. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, going through and based on whether players player feedback or, or just changing my mind on things or whatnot, just making it the perfect experience. And so not only did I go through every single mission and adjusted it to fit perfectly on the 3DS with the different screens, uh, I also went through and added some things. So for example, if it's easier to get weapons now. You can go find trucks to buy weapons from or hijack them, which adds another uh, meta game. And when you're causing chaos and the cops come after you, there's more of a meta game to that as well where the cops are a bit more difficult, but you can now lose them more easily. If you clear the screen of the cops, then they'll drop a thing that'll lower your wanted level. So little things like that, and then also just user interface things. For example, the, uh, the new UI done brand new for the 3DS, and you've got a mini map where it shows the locations of things, and you can scroll around with the touch screen, touch screen weapon select, and it's been months of additional work, basically. So as an independent developer, you had kind of an interesting story of you know, playing a lot of roles in, in making this game. What are some of you know, the, the different <laughs> things that you were responsible for in this game? In this game, I did originally absolutely everything. And then I brought on another super talented artist who was much more talented than I was mm -hmm. and, and was able to take the art to the next level. And I worked with three composers, which is also actually kind of odd for uh, a game of this scope, but they were just so talented, I, I just wanted them in. Yeah. Um, but other than that, my, myself, I did the programming, the design, all the porting to the different platforms, uh, the writing, the production stuff, the business end. And so there were a lot of times that weren't quite as fun where I was dealing with spreadsheets and paperwork. Yeah. 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 Definitely more fun on the creative side. Do yeah. you have a favorite part of the game that, that you want to talk about or one that you were yeah. really inspired by? I think that. Not necessarily a specific part, but through development, I think one of the best experiences was the, um, I'd say, improv of it. Whereas mm -hmm. working for other studios before, I was working on bigger projects like AAA, and you have so many people working on things, you're working on just a tiny piece, and you don't necessarily have an impact on other stuff. Right. With this, because I, I could do all of the art, I could do even some sound effects, I could do writing and all of that, as I would come up with an idea for a level or a mission, I'd start to implement it, and as I was implementing it, it would snowball into new ideas. And so I'd, oh, it'd be great if I add an animation here, mm -hmm. or I add sound effect there. And before I know it, the mission's kind of warped into something different, but better. Yeah, and seeing kind of that all come together must be really, really cool. It did, and there were times when it would just all come together at eight at night or nine at night. <laughs> yeah. So this is a game that's been out on a couple different platforms, but what is really new beyond the DX stuff uh, mm -hmm. on Nintendo 3DS? We were talking a little bit earlier about some of the tweaks that you made to how the game plays. Yeah, some of the cool things that came out of the DS 3DS version was that due to some limitations, for example, the screen size, with the screen size I ended up zooming in and so there was less of a border to of the game world that you were seeing, but as a result, I added some camera panning and when you're driving fast the camera pulls forward and those actually enhance the experience and 
by a happy accident, I felt that the game actually played better because when you're on foot and attacking enemies, the camera's closer to you, so the action feels tighter. And when you're driving, because you're moving more pixels at a time, the car feels like it's moving faster, even though it's the same speed as the other platforms. And that being the case, if I were to go back and do the Wii version again, I would probably zoom in the screen more. Mm. So, uh, you know, in addition to the main story mode, you've also got these sort of shorter burst missions where, you know, you're just let loose in the city. And the, the one we were doing was you're trying to do a certain amount of, of damage in a set amount of time. It seemed like there were a lot of different types yeah. of those missions for people to check out. Yeah, so there are three classes of those missions. And the idea is, especially because it's a handheld experience, mm -hmm. is that if someone just has a few minutes, they just want to pick up and play and cause destruction, then they can just load up one of these. And... The first uh, arcade challenge is these sprees. They have specific things where you might have a power-up, or one of the more intricate ones is that you've got a rocket jump, so shoot the rocket launcher point-blank at things to launch yourself in the air and stay airborne as long as you can. Uh, and then other ones, the second-rate sprees, where you just have a certain weapon and 30, sec 30 seconds you've got to get a high score. And then the third one are story missions, where you're replaying old story missions from the main game, but with a different objective, a timer, or you have to get a perfect score, things like that. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, last question before we go. What is your favorite Nintendo game of all time? Any game on a Nintendo platform? Yeah. Really hard question, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a hard question because I, um, I put the most hours into Mario World, probably, yeah. and Mario yeah. 1 and Mario 3, but my favorite non-stereotypical game that of course everyone loves those games uh, would probably be Batman on the NES. That one just had the perfect controls, visuals, and the audio and to this day that music still stuck in my head. Yeah, Purple Batman is hard to beat. It is. Yeah. It, it, it was weird at the time and it's still kind of weird but the rest of the game is fantastic. It's a nice touch. Yeah. Well Brian, thanks for joining us today ta telling us about Retro City Rampage DX for Nintendo yes. 3DS and everybody thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.